Have you ever wanted to do something so bad it hurt? But the harder you worked at it, the further away it seemed to be. I've hit a little bit of a wall. I haven't told Carl this yet, but I'm really not doing well. I'm just very uh, discouraged, very upset. Ugh. We're only 15 miles in and now, I don't know if I can do it. I can't believe that uh, I'm crashing like this. I feel bad because I'm holding Carl back. Joe, did you get that? Yes, I got it, Jared. Thank you. Three mile house. I think I'll be there about an hour and ten minutes. Awesome. The first time I ever went to the Grand Canyon was to hike it rim to rim to rim. It's also commonly referred to as R3. To give you an idea what that means, if you start at the South Kaibab Trail, go down and across, then up to the North Kaibab Trailhead, turn around and go back down, then across to the other side and up the Bright Angel Trail. It's 44 and a half miles, 11,000 feet of elevation gain, 22,000 feet of elevation change, and quite literally uphill both ways. The idea is to do all of it in one shot without sleeping. To put it another way, imagine getting up in the morning, going out the door, and walking, running, and hiking for eight hours straight, an entire workday. And what if, instead of going home to sleep, you kept on walking, running, and hiking for another eight hours, for a total of 16 hours straight? And it can easily take much longer than that. No stopping to sleep, no stopping to have a nice dinner, and no stopping to watch your favorite show on Netflix. Tell us how you got into endurance racing. Tell me how you got into the Grand Canyon. I have another friend also named Jared. He came to me end of, 20, uh, end of 2014 and he said, hey, you wanna go hike the Grand Canyon with us? And I was like, uh, isn't that like 50 miles or whatever? And, he, and then he goes, yeah, we're gonna do it in 24 hours. And I said, what? I was like, no. No, no, no. Well, he kept going around to our mutual friends and recruiting all these people. And one by one, these guys are signing up. Apparently, I was the only one that knew it was insane. And, and, and then one of my friends, I, he said, he told me he was doing it. And I said, really? You're doing that? He goes, yeah, it's just hiking. <laughs> you know, and I was like, OK. So we went. I, I, I barely made it to the other side. It's, it's one o'clock in the morning. I have my headlamp on. We are spread out. Mm. and I'm all by myself, and I, I desperately want to quit. The only way out was to go to the top, and there, you can't just quit. You can't just say, oh, I'm done. And then I hear, uh, you know, whooping and hollering and some real energetic voices off in the distance. And soon I see some headlamps, and there's a group of trail runners, and they're coming down. And I look at them, and I thought, they're idiots. You know what I mean? Like, what? And, and I, and I'm like, oh, sure, you're happy now. Just wait till you get to the other yeah. side. You know what I mean? And I'm like, what are they thinking? Like, but I could, I could readily tell they were in way better shape than me. And mm -hmm. there was a part of me that um, I, I both envied and despised them. They're so far and beyond yeah. what I could ever be. And in my mind, I was, I think, I was 44 at the time. I thought, one, I would never want to do that. And two, even if I did, it's impossible for me. Mm. Even if I did, I'm too old. I could never do that. Maybe when I was 20 or even 30, but not, you know, so forget it. Get it out of your mind and just continue your suffering up the hill until you can get out of here. At the top, I said, I will never, ever come back here again. Little did I know, the Grand Canyon would occupy my mind for the next seven years. In 2017, I went back and I was able to hike the Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim in 20 hours and 38 minutes. Leading up to that trip, I, there was a lot of anxiety that I had because I was all my fears and stuff. But um, 
on the way up there, I was like, hey, we, we could do this. We could do this in 20 hours. We could do this in 18 hours. And they're like looking at me like, dude. And then I said, we can do this in 16 hours. And one of them said, now you're kidding yourself, right? That's where the number comes from, 16 hours. I keep telling everybody, I want to do this in 16 hours. Well, that's where that, that number comes from. 20 and a half hours was tough, but I just felt like I could do more. Part of the, um, part of the motivation was sort of wanting to prove that guy wrong. But my motivation now really has nothing to do with that. I go back to those trail runners and I go back to those thoughts um, that I had. For me, 16 hours is like, that's the edge of my limit. Mm -hmm. And I have to really become something more. I'm going through this sort of transformation, trying to become this guy that can do this thing that I once thought was utterly impossible. In 2018, I set a goal to go back to the Grand Canyon and do rim to rim to rim in 16 hours. This time I invited my good friend, Carl Dobbins. Well, okay, he's not just a good friend. He's more like a brother to me. Hey, nice of you to wake up this morning. Oh, nice to be here. <laughs> you have a long night? Um, it was a short night. <laughs> it was a short night and I was, I was like, why hasn't my alarm gone off yet? <laughs> yes. And I looked at the clock and it's 5.01. It's so funny. Dude, you look like you've lost a little bit of weight. I do? Yeah. You just bought a bigger shirt. <laughs> 16 hours isn't the fastest time it's ever been done. Not even close. It's not even considered fast by ultra marathon standards. But for two out of shape, middle-aged, mediocre men like us, it's pretty significant. We knew we would have to work really hard if we were going to have any hope of achieving our goal. And we did. We trained every week for several months. And on May 18th, at 3.43 in the morning, our adventure finally started. But it didn't go quite the way we planned. I haven't told Carl this yet, but I'm really not doing well. My stomach is upset. I'm just really tired. Hopefully I'll be able to recover. Because, uh, I'm just not doing well, and we have a long ways to go. I'm feeling sick. I have no energy. I'm just very uh, discouraged, very upset. Ugh. I keep thinking all that training, Ugh. all that time, all that <clears throat> work and focusing on this. We're only 15 miles in, and now I don't know if I can do it. We made it to the North Rim in just over eight hours. I've just been dealing with nausea this whole time. And honestly, I was thinking, I don't know if it'd be smart for me to go back. I've just been feeling so terrible. Uh, I've been trying to decide if I'm gonna take the shuttle back or if I was gonna Go back across. Ah. Let's, see, let's see. So I'm 18 hours, 18 hours and uh, like 23 minutes. Ah, it was tough. That North Rim is tough. That thing is tough. Ah, wow. It was challenging, that's for sure. How's Jared? He's not that good. He, uh, he just, he just couldn't, he was just sick and he couldn't do anything about it. So he just struggled. He was actually really putting a lot of effort in. He was really trying, really trying, really trying. And he just couldn't, he couldn't go. So he had to stop. Where's he at? I made it to Phantom Ranch. I sat on a picnic table, was resting and was trying to, uh, wait so I could eat something and drink something, but uh, I just was not feeling well, just feeling really nauseous. And all of a sudden I started puking. Suddenly there's a crowd of people around me, and next thing you know, I'm in at the ranger station. And Dan and Ed are uh, 
taking care of me. They're saying that um, I just have a significant deficit in calories and that my body's starting to shut down. So I still can't believe this day has ended this way. That was one of the most difficult days of my life. I had failed and failed big. I was embarrassed, beyond frustrated, but mostly I was heartbroken. I suppose any sane person would let it go. I gave it a good try, right? But I couldn't just give up. I had set a goal and I had to go back. In the last four years, I've spent most of my Saturdays training for the Grand Canyon and vlogging about it on YouTube. And when I wasn't training, I was thinking about it day and night. In that time, I've run close to 5,000 miles, including approximately 200,000 feet of elevation gain. I've changed the way I eat, I've lost over 40 pounds, and every one of my toenails, at least once. Well, and some more than once. I've been focused on this for four years, and Carl, he's been there every step of the way. Woo! <laughs> Here comes Carl. Woo! <laughs> Carl says we're gonna race to the end, so I guess I better stop talking and get going. We haven't been alone either. Others have joined us in our adventures. 926. Took us three hours to get to the bottom. Uh, I'm JT, Jared Taylor. I'm here with Carl Dobbins. And we've got Nathan Dobbins. Hey, how's it going? Nathan is uh, Carl's nephew, and he's going to be going with us today. We have some new people with us. My son, Jacob, he's here for the first time. What do you think so far, Jacob? So far, it's pretty epic. Yeah, and what, what, what are you impressed with the most so far? Mainly just the view. You feel really tiny out here. It's really vast. The picture will never be able to capture all of it adequately. Ready, Joe? <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready or not. <laughs> and others have reached out to offer their help. How about a little coaching? Of course. All right, we're coming downhill. Uh-huh. And uh, we're training for the Grand Canyon. Right. We're on a great trail, uh -huh. especially for Bright Angel. But uh, what I like to see, I think your knees are a little too far forward. So I want you to sit back a little more. All right. So if I'm in visualizing myself sitting uh -huh. as I'm coming downhill. Oh, okay. And the steeper I get, the more I sit. Okay. And I'm always focused on feeling it in the belly of the muscle of my uh -huh. quads. Yeah. If I'm feeling it in my joints, I'm too far over my toes. Uh -huh. Yeah, I actually feel... That's you interesting. That I do. Yeah, if I lean forward, I feel it yep. more in my knees. Yep, yep. If I, if I kind of hang back a little bit, it's just a minor adjustment. That's cool. Yeah, I, it's, a big, it's a big difference, and here's why. Yeah. Here's the difference, because you're, you're JT training for the Grand Canyon. Right. Training for 16 hours. Yeah. So the key to that is being able to recover on the downhills instead of trashing yourself on the downhill. Right. So if you're trashed coming off South Calibab and you're trashed coming off the North Rim because you're using your joints too much right? and your hip flexors and the tendons too much, uh -huh. you're not gonna have any left. At this angle here, this is about North Rim yeah. angle here. Yeah. And attack the last four and a half miles because you're gonna have a steady eight, 900 feet per mile climb. And you're just gonna grind. You're gonna yeah. grind. Because remember now, you're training different because you're shooting for 16 hours. Right. So you're looking at your clock now. Right. And you're like, what do you got, Jared? Right. Because right. if I'm with you, I'm, I'm hitting you in the head. Right. What do you got? Right. Pick it up. Pick it up. Let's go. Yeah. Now, if you've done it right, your hip flexors, right here, yep. quads, will be okay. If you overdid it on the run to Phantom Ranch, uh -huh. You might be in trouble. Hip flexors will be trashed. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Gonna be a, it's gonna be a grind. Yep. I would rather have you make up a ton of time going uphill, uphill. Yeah. than lose it all. Including that first trip in 2015, I've been to the Grand Canyon 11 times. I've done R3 four times, and three times I've seriously tried to do it in 16 hours. Three times I've tried, and three times I've failed. It's turned out to be much more difficult than I thought. At times I've wondered, maybe I really am kidding myself. Maybe it really is impossible. I still can't believe this day has ended this way. 
I just don't have the energy. I don't have the fitness to do this. Ow, my, my left knee is really, really, it really hurts right now. It's kind of hard to step on it, my left foot. And my right Achilles heel, Achilles tendon is really bothering me. It hurts a lot too. But mostly it's just that I don't have, I'm not in good enough shape for this. Why, why am I doing this? Why, what am I doing? You know, I'm not good at this. Why am I even trying? I'm not feeling that great. I'm battling nausea again. Uh, I'm not really sure if I care so much about 16 hours, if I need to be sick for another eight. And very, very close to just saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not doing good. I uh, think it went too fast. Oh, man, it's discouraging, frustrating, embarrassing, embarrassing. <laughs> but it's beautiful. This will be my 12th trip to the Grand Canyon and my fourth serious attempt at doing R3 in 16 hours. No turning back now. Actually, if we're gonna turn back, this is the point. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get Carl with the official time. All right. Wait, why are your hands shaking? <laughs> what is it again? Your time, 313. See ya. See ya. Is it October 14th? 16 hours. Whatever Step day. one. Yeah. Here we go. Feel pretty good so far. It's about 5.30 in the morning, and I am heading up the, uh, the North Kaibab Trail. I got down to the bottom of South Kaibab in about two hours. I've been deliberately trying to go a little slower today. I just ran into Nathan. Nathan was turned around coming back the other way. Uh, he said he's not feeling very good. So he doesn't feel like it'd be a good decision to keep going. So he's decided to turn around and head up Bright Angel. Uh, Carl's back there a ways. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen him for a little while, but I, I expect he's just like a few minutes behind me. But um, either way, I, I'm gonna keep going. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, it's a little tired from coming down South Kaibab, but not, not that bad. Nathan is back. He had some problems earlier. Tell him what, what was going on, Nathan. Uh, just issues with my ankle and my knee. And I, I just wasn't feeling the greatest. So I had made the decision to turn around and head out when we got to Phantom Ranch. But uh, I waited there for a few minutes and I let my ankle rest and then Carl showed up and I'm like, I'm not gonna let it beat me. So here I am walking next to Jared. So Nathan ran to catch up to me, he caught up to me, and we just, hello, and we just uh, went through uh, Cottonwood. We're heading towards Manzanita and the base of the North Rim. And uh, 
we're making pretty good time and we're right on the edge of where we want to be. We're going to try to pick the pace up just a little bit. I've been purposely going slow because I want to conserve as much as I can across the day and not push it too hard too early on um, to hopefully have a lot more left towards the second half of the day than I have in the past. Uh, it's a balance for sure. But I'm very happy to see Nathan and I'm happy to hear that Carl is doing well. He's just back there a little ways. So he, what I understand, he but he injured his hip or hurt his... No, his... His hip was bugging on him? On the way down, he was going slow because his hip was giving him pain. Oh, okay. So it took him a little longer to get to uh, okay. Blackbridge than normal. Okay, that's why. Because I was going slow too, and I didn't see Carl, so I was kind of worried. But I'm glad to hear he's doing okay. Here we are. The Manzanita Bridge. Supai Tunnel. Right, We're gonna take a quick break, get some water, and keep moving. Okay. Man, that was a slog. I just got to the top of the North Rim. Seven hours. Seven hours, 15 minutes. That's the fastest I've ever done it. I'm very happy. I'm going to get some water. I'm going to start to uh, eat. I'm gonna turn around and start going back. Uh, I have a real shot of hitting my goal. This is the first major milestone. I'm very happy uh, and I'm very tired, but uh, I'm gonna just take five. I'm gonna, again, man, so I'm happy. I feel like I've already won. Top of the North Rim, it's cool. It's beautiful, all the trees. Ah, oh, man. So, whew, here we go. Back down into the canyon. Ah, here comes Nathan. Nathan, seven hours, 15 minutes. Holy crap, nice. Yeah, so we're, we're killing it, dude. Cool. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna water up and head back. Get, get some food and yeah. start going back. I think that's a good idea. By yourself. Wait for Carl. Yeah, I'm gonna hang out here. I okay. can't. Uh, I can't hop back into it yet. Okay. Oh man, my hand is shaking. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, water up. Okay. Hey, Carl. How 
How you doing? I'm all right. How about you? Good. I'm doing good. You've been up there and back, huh? Yeah. Dude, seven hours, 15 minutes. That's awesome. So, hopefully, uh, it feels like it's doable. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm on pace to hit hit up there in eight, in eight hours. Oh, good. So I'm about 40 minutes behind you. See if you can, uh, see if you can get uh, Nathan to come back with What's you. What's he doing? He's he's uh, just chilling up there. He's he's uh, he's debating his, if he's coming back. I think so. His his knee is hurting him, and his ankle is hurting him. So he's uh, yeah, I have those problems decided. too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling some aches and pains too. All right, bro. Do you have any any painkiller at all? Yeah. Can I have some? Yeah. I think I'm still gonna be able to break 1655. At least that's what I'm gonna try. Awesome. Okay. I guess we better stop lollygagging yeah. and get to it. Huh? I better get the heck out of here. All right. All right, see ya. Bam, see ya. That's so awesome. I got to see Carl. He's he's hurting. He he's got some some uh, hip pain. What did you say, Carl? Hip and knees and stuff. He's already gone. He's dealing with some pain. I've actually been having some shooting pain in my left knee and also in my right ankle. I don't know what I did. I know I hyperextended it earlier today when I was coming down. Uh, South Kaibab, it hurt really bad, but I was still functional. And maybe, maybe I uh, just had, I don't know. I'm not gonna put it in my mind, try to analyze it, but it hasn't really been an issue. Uh, but coming down this right now, it's, it's hurting. Um, but I'm just gonna try to put that out of my mind. I just got some Tylenol and I'm gonna keep going. I, uh, I'm on pace, I'm actually under pace. I think I have a chance. So I'm gonna just try to be careful and persistent and uh, and see see how it goes. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. I actually feel really good right now. Um, I'm not sure how much of that is emotion, but I don't care, I'll take it. I mean, a lot of the energy we have, we ever have comes from emotion, right? I'll, I will take it as long as I can. I'm not gonna film as much, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to go faster and uh, filming uh, does slow me down. So I will try to get some video here and there. Like it's hard not to because this place is so amazing. So I'm about 10 minutes from the North Rim. Saw Jared a few minutes ago. He's doing good. So get up here and hit the rim and just turn right around. I just wanted to give a little bit of view going on from up here looking good see Mount Humphreys in the back I got a call Carl and Nathan were at the, top, at the north rim uh, Jared's about 45 minutes ahead of him is what Carl said he had turned made the turn and was on his way back and he's as Carl said killing it so that's great uh, Nathan's got some issue I'm not sure what it is at this point but He's looking to catch the shuttle back to the south rim. Okay, well, it's about 2.30 and I'm getting close to Phantom Ranch. I'm really cutting it close. I wanted to be there by two, but uh, I've run into some problems. Earlier this morning, I hyperextended my knee and it really hurt for a moment, and, but my knee was still functional. So <laughs> that's my left knee and I just kept on walking, kept on hiking, kept on running. And then uh, got to the top of the North Rim, started coming down and then all of a sudden that knee started hurting. Well, 
I've been able to manage that. And just a little bit ago, I was running and my right leg started seizing up. Not cramping, but uh, that tendon on the outside of your leg, start, it's tightening up and I'm getting a lot of IT band pain. And that's really been, those things have been slowing me down. I've been pushing it, but I'm losing time. So I'm thinking I might skip Phantom Ranch and just go on to Bright Angel. I don't know. If the line is short, I really want to get some lemonade. I'm a little discouraged because my time is starting to fade and I'm getting close to the wire where I just don't have any time. I'm about 10 minutes from Manzanita and uh, not hurting any worse, just hurting. Just keep moving along, trying to keep fueling and keep drinking. We've got Roaring Falls right over next to here. So not really making very good time, but just keep moving. Well, I decided to stop and get some lemonade. <laughs> it's 2.55, so a lot later than I wanted it to be leaving here, but I'm leaving here. However, man, my knee is really, really hurting. <sighs> that uh, right leg. You know, it's really frustrating because my knees are pretty bomb-proof. I mean, they've been really, really good this whole year. Put a lot of strain on them today, and. You know, one stepping the wrong way and stretching my left knee beyond where it wants to be. And then uh, this tendon tightening up on my right leg. That's what that IT band is. It's just, oh man, it hurts. And I'm just trying to try to push through it. I found some ibuprofen in my pack and I uh, just pounded a bunch of that. So hopefully that will help, but either way, I'm pressing on, I still have time. If I can pick up the pace, I still have a, a chance of hitting my goal. So I'm gonna keep going see if I can do it. So it's about a little after three, like 3.20. Hopefully, hopefully Jared is at Phantom Ranch or even past Phantom Ranch, the Silver Bridge or so. If he is, he's got a chance because he's got four hours left to meet 16 hours. So if he's able to just uh, grind like we did three weeks ago, three weeks ago we did Silver Bridge to the top in three hours and 36 minutes. So if he could be at the Silver Bridge right now, hopefully he is. He's about an hour and something ahead of me, so that's probably should be about where he's at. So if he can at least even do four hours It'd be, it'd be right about hitting the 16 hours. Well, I just got done with the Devil's Corkscrew. It was hard, but I did it, and uh, I did okay. And now I'm headed towards Indian Garden, and uh, I'm gonna slow down, let my heart rate come back down. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm doing pretty good, so as long as I can keep going, and as long as uh, I don't have any issues, I have a pretty good chance of, of uh, getting my time, getting closer. It's beautiful here. It's just amazing. Maybe first to start with, what is your relationship with the Grand Canyon? How would you define that? Honestly, that's, a hard, that's hard to answer. It's a part of me. It's in my heart, it's in my soul. 
it's in my blood. I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just in, in a way that I can't, it's very difficult to explain more so than any other place on the planet. You know, it, it seems logical to say it's a love hate relationship, but I can't say that because yeah. it's just a love relationship. You know, uh, I just love that place. And it's, it's so much deeper than just a beautiful place for me. Joe, did you get that? Yes, I got it, Jared. Thank you. Three mile house. Okay, I'll see you. I'll see you in about an hour, I think. Hour and ten. Come again, Jared. Come again. I think I'll be there about an hour and ten minutes. Awesome. Okay, well, it's getting later in the day. You may know this already, but Nathan took the shuttle. He should be here in a few minutes, so we'll be here to greet you. All right, well, you just got an update on the walkie-talkie. Um, it's getting towards the end of the day. I am getting closer to the top. It is, I just passed the three-mile house and I'm heading up to the mile and a half house and on to the top. <sighs> Gotta keep on going. It's getting close. All right, so I'm about to go up Devil's Corkscrew. So after having gone 39 miles already, and about six more to go, <clears throat> let's see how I do on Devil's Corkscrew. Usually we try to just push through all the way to the top, see if I can do it. Here's Jared coming up. You got it, Jared! Yay, yay. Come on, boy! 
Really? After all that, I made it up in four yeah. hours. You made it in four hours? Yeah, from the Silver Bridge team. That's so awesome, dude. That's crazy, That's dude. Awesome. Ah. That's another R3. <laughs> I just did 45, 45, 45, just yeah. like, like I had planned. I just like to talk about it. Hey. You, you got 1551? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it, dude. Thank you. Ay, ay, ay. I know, how did you do it? I don't know, I just kept going. <laughs> just kept going, dude. I, I hiked most of it, I didn't run so much. So, South Kaibab, going down, I just, my left side was just killing me. Oh, no. And then, so it was uh, that way the whole way. On the uphill, I was fine. I killed it. I was on schedule, did just what I needed to do. Yeah, yeah. But then the downhills, I had to just walk. I couldn't oh, run. No. So, I, so I lost an hour and a half coming back to Phantom Branch. Oh, so it's still R3. I know. <laughs> Cold out here. Uh, it's yeah, freezing. Yeah, let's get to the truck. All right, let's go. You got all your stuff? Guys. Great Thank job. You. Thank you. Have you ever wanted to do something so bad it hurt? But the harder you worked at it, the further away it seemed to be. Keep working at it, one step at a time. You're very likely closer than you think. GoPro stop recording. Dipped in the creek, taking a nice little break. It's gonna make my time be a little later, but that's all right. Hopefully, Jared's making it happen. Just doing what Stephen does, doing a little chillaxing in the creek. Hopefully, Jared's pushing hard and then make that 16 hours. 